So good morning to one and all. Um, I feel it is a pleasure uh, to be at Trichy, Trichy for the ex as external examiner and uh, address on this occasion this uh, topic speak on the topic modernization of rice breeding programs because why modernization and uh, uh, even the last year also I have spoken on the same topic at TNAU Coimbatore. So why modernization? Everybody says modernization, modernization, modernization. Aren't we modern enough? Are we not facing the problems of modernization? But still, every modernization continues to be the buzzword. So why we need to modernize our plant breeding programs or the rice breeding programs? So we have released many varieties, um, uh, mostly after the 80s. The rice varieties that we have released have come through the pedigree method of breeding. So when we use the pedigree method of breeding, so to create variability and to use the suitable and desirable variant, we will use the pedigree method of breeding. Eating. So uh, you make a cross between two desirable parents and select the desirable segregate after it has stabilized in the F6 generation test it in the yield trials and then in the farmer's fields, in the miniket trials or the adaptive trials and then release it as a variety. But it takes almost 12 to 13 years or 12 to 13 seasons for a variety to be released using the pedigree method of breeding. So uh, I can share for all those who are busy in writing or who want to um, uh, have this I will share this PPT with everybody. This PPT will be available to you. So you can listen and ask for doubts. So don't concentrate on writing, uh, preferably in trying to listen and trying to understand wh what I am telling and why there is a need to modernize our uh, rice breeding programs in particular. So uh, this rice breeding program uh, is taking a lot of time almost 12 to 13 years, even if we go for two seasons, seasons that is the Kharif and Rabi season, we will be uh, going for uh, six to seven years um, before a variety is released. Release and the uh, area that we require is also considerably large. So uh, currently I think we will be a breeders at Maruteru research station, which is a lead rice research station on Andhra Pradesh state under Acharya N.G. Ranga agricultural university the number of crosses that are being adapted uh, made are 40 to 50 crosses as is every year they will be making 40 to 50 crosses with 40 to 50 crosses as is the entire segregating material will require about six to seven acres of land so with the increasing labor uh, and uh, financial resources constraint labor constraint and, and the land constraint, so we need to go for our breeding program modernization. In the traditional pedigree method of breeding, it will require 50 crosses, almost 7 acres of land. So uh, this is the slide, uh, why modernization is required? Because modernization is a demand driven breeding program. So even in the earlier Viva OC also, I was asking, asking and uh, we must know what is the problem we are addressing addressing and um, the target where we are going and where our product is going to go unless we know the um, demand the market demand we cannot uh, prepare the product according to the demand or the market so unless we produce our product or shape our product according to the market, our product will not reach, um, will be rejected by the different stakeholders. That is, the, there are different stakeholders, the farmers, millers and the consumers. So you have to satisfy all the three, only then your product will be in, uh, useful to the society. SIT or the entire amount that you have spent on your research, it may be 10 years or 15 years, it will be useful. Otherwise, the entire amount, the labor and the pains that you have taken in development of the product will go waste. 
so uh, it, so many uh, varieties so many and in uh, and entries we are genotypes we are testing how many are coming to the final stage only one or two so most of the times even one or two are not coming to the final stage still there is a demand in the market for new varieties day by day in every forum in every meeting that you attend the farmers will ask what is the new variety so they will say that this variety is having so and so problem we need to have a replacement for this variety so are we able to meet the demands of the farmers are we able to meet the demands of the market we are not able to meet the demands of the market or the farmers because we are not going for demand driven breeding programs we are having having our own breeding programs with our own research agenda and our product is not according to the demands of the farmers or the millers or the consumers and that is why our products are not able to make any dent in the market are the other varieties are being in uh, um, are being selected by the farmers they are going to far off places and getting varieties from other research stations other institutes or other private companies but our products are not um, uh, being preferred by the farmers because our research programs are not demand driven breeding programs so any breeder who is taking up a breeding program must have an idea about the market so what are the farmers preference what is the millers preference what is the consumers preference so he must um, design his product or he must have a product profile based upon the market preference the consumer preference and the miller preference he must have a product profile in his brain or in his uh, target as his target once that product profile is targeted then he must go for the parental selection so uh, to give that product to the farming community and uh, or uh, the society what are the parents that i require so if i have to put it in my context in the andhra pradesh context so now there is a demand for a short duration fine grain variety variety similar to rnr 15048 right or the telangana sona so now what are the criteria it must be around 120 to 125 days duration so my parents should be around 120 to 125 days duration only then the test weight the test weight it should be in the short slender short slender grain type so my parents should be on the short slender grain type so i must have i must know the genetics of the grain type so which one is predominant so based upon the genetics of the grain type based upon the genetics of the duration aeration i should make the selection of the parents parents and then the other objective is it should have bph resistance it should have blast resistance it should have blb tolerance so and it should be non lodging so this is my product profile what is my product profile short duration variety of 120 to 125 days fine grain that is short slender grain type test weight should be less than 1.5 grams uh, grams and uh, the, uh, it should be semi dwarf variety not more than 120 cm plant height the plant type should be erect and compact and the tillers tiller should not be around 10 to 12 tillers the panicle length should be almost 25 to 30 cm the grain number per panicle should be almost 300 to 400 grains per panicle panicle this is the plant type that i am looking for this is the product profile that is that i am looking for in addition to that i need to have a head rise recovery of at least 67% for it to be suitable to the miller and for it to be beneficial to the farmer farmer it should have the blast tolerance the bph tolerance and the blb tolerance and to be suitable for the consumer it should have intermediate amylose content and then it should be um, uh, it should not have abdominal chalkiness that is it should be translucent isn't and it the volume expansion ratio should be very high the water uptake should be good but these are some of the traits that i am looking for in my parent so i will be selecting such parents again these parents should be contrasting type 
and so that I can recognize when I make a cross, which is the basis for making a, a cross between any two parents. So such parents I will select, make a suitable cross. So when I do this, I am going for a targeted breeding program which is market oriented, which is having a specific product profile. So my target is very clearly defined. My product is very clearly defined. Everything is very clearly defined. My parents are very clearly defined and my parents are also allied into allied. So what do I mean by allied into allied? Are we not taking allied into allied? So what is the difference in this modern breeding program that I am speaking of from the routine breeding program? In the routine breeding program, we always make a cross between a variety into a variety or a variety into a land race. So here the genetic gain will be less. So but there will be several genotypes in your station trials, OYT, PYT, AYT or the initial varietal trial or the advanced varietal trial. So the, these genotypes which are much superior to your released varieties or the mini kit varieties are the allied varieties that we are speaking of. So if you take those varieties as your programs, so you are already aiming for high yield potential much better or much superior to your existing varieties because they are already higher yielding than your released varieties. But if you are taking your released varieties or your mini kit varieties, you are compromising on the yield potential. So you have to go for an allied into allied breeding program rather than a variety into variety, variety into mini kit or a variety into land race program. Then coming to the breeding value of the parents. So earlier we used to tell combinability. Now we are able to calculate the breeding value of the parents. Based upon the breeding value of the parents, we can judge whether the parent is having a capacity to give superior progeny or not. So if you go for selection of the parents based upon its breeding value, you are going to get a superior progeny and if fitting to the product profile that you have targeted for yourself. And so then breeding scheme optimization. So you have to redesign the breeding pipelines from shifting to the pedigree method to modified single seed descent method of breeding and the shortening of the breeding cycle time to enable the product development to um, meet the demand because the demands of the farmers or the demands of the market are changing at a fast pace continuously they are changing so what happens or the, the problem that is being faced by the breeders is they take up a breeding program on the current demand and by the time that they are able to come up with a product the demand has already shifted to some other product profile so which the earlier product profile will not fit to the uh, existing market demand so uh, that is why you have to hasten up your breeding cycle cycle so as to be able to give the product within the, in the demand before the demand shifts to another um, uh, particular uh, set uh, uh, before the demand gets modified okay so uh, you that is why you have to hasten up your breeding cycle so reduce the breeding cycle from six years or seven years to preferably three years three years how do you reduce you have to go for speed breeding i will come to the speed breeding concept then why you need to modify from the current pedigree method of breeding to single seed descent method of breeding so here in the pedigree method of breeding we are making selections from f2 onwards in f2 we will make single plant selections f3 onwards we will make selections the progeny selections will be done up to F6. In F6, after stabilization, we will advance the selected progeny to the yield trials, which is uniform and does not segregate. Further, if we will advance to the yield trials and we we'll evaluate again is the checks, the released varieties and others, and then promote the superior ones. So this we need to modify. Why do we need to modify this selection? from F2 to F5 is in segregating generations. The, the single plant that I have selected will not breed true 
and will not give the same characters for which I have selected in the F3 because it is still segregating for the traits for which I have selected. That is why my selection is not effective and hence I have to reselect, keep on selecting, selecting for the desirable traits till F6, maintain the record, record and ultimately make the selection which I require in F6. So why not uh, avoid all these selections and reduce the drudgery on the breeder and make the selection in F6 itself after stabilization is the, is the reason behind the concept of single seed descent method of breeding which we all have studied in our undergraduation, postgraduation and doctoral studies and now is a basic concept of the modernized breeding program being used internationally, globally and even at the national level and now reaching reaching uh, the SEAUs also. Also, so uh, the single seed descent method that is the advantage the uh, plant that you have selected will breed true to the characters for which you have made selection and will not have any further segregation and I have reduced the drudgery of selection uh, on the breeder. The another advantage is um, uh, where will be the maximum variability in the F2 or in the F6, the maximum variability will be in the F2 only. So when I am selecting, electing in F6, you can see because of the selections, the number of progenies are reduced from 4000 to um, almost 6 progenies in a pedigree method of breeding. So the variability that is available for my final selection in the pedigree method of breeding is very less. Whereas in the single seed descent method of breeding, the entire 4000 plants, single, the entire variability 4000 will be, will be continued up to F6. Anything if it is lost, will be lost because of natural causes, not because of our selection. Election. So we are selecting and we are, we are selecting and losing the variability and the selecting that we are making is not true to type. So to avoid these two factors, to preserve the variability, variability and also select true to type, we are changing the method of breeding that is from the pedigree method of breeding to single seed descent method of breeding. Adding, adding, so when we change the methods of breeding, so these are the main two advantages we are targeting. The other advantage, what is the other advantage is so under the pedigree method of breeding, as I have told you, if it is a regional agriculture research station Mariteru, annually they will be making about 50 crosses. 50 crosses, 7 acres of land is required to maintain the segregating generations of about 50 crosses. Whereas if I go for the speed breeding method, method or the modified um, the single seed descent method of breeding, Heading, I require only one acre to maintain the 50 crosses. So uh, I, I am saving the financial resources, I am saving the land resources, I am saving the labor resources which have become very crucial nowadays. So we do not have funds, we do not have labor. Um, so that is why this, is, this has become the need of the hour. So how much we are saving? In F2, I have given what is the area required for one cross. And in F3, I have given, F4, I have given, F5, I have given, F6, I have given. So simultaneously, if we are have, handling 50 crosses, as um, uh, all the six generations, we need to have about seven acres. acres. So uh, this is the uh, breeding scheme in which we are currently operating at uh, Angru. Angru Maruter in specific and all the seven rice research centers under Acharya NG Ranga Agriculture University. So first the product profile is generated based on the product profile and the parental selection will be done and the F1 to F6 uh, generations will be raised. Then the OIT that is the observational yield trial, then the preliminary yield trial, advanced yield trial, three station in the trial, three years the station trials are 
uh, conducted. Then multi-location trials are conducted for two years. Uh, yes, after conducting the multi-location trials for two years, yes, it will be tested in mini kits again for three years. After testing in mini kits, it will be proposed for the state level varietal release. So the, once a variety has established its performance after being selected in F6 generation and promoted to OYT, again as the released and the popular checks, in the, again in the multi locations, that is seven locations in the state, then mini kits in the farmers fields, then it will be proposed to the state varietal release committee and for release in the central variety release committee, committee uh, it, it has only two seasons data is required two year station trials data is required it will be nominated for the ivt that is the initial varietal evaluation trial then avt1 avt2 under the recrypt system and if it is identified at the avt2 in the varietal identification committee it will be released at the national level by the central variety release committee this is the breeding program which is currently under operation so we have modernized it how we have modernized it so we have not changed the trialing part we have only changed the we hastened up the product development part that is the segregating part f1 to f6 it requires almost six seasons so we have condensed it we have reduced it. How we have reduced it? So the crossing program, program we have, it is on routine. There is no modification. However, in F1, there is a modification. Earlier, we used to do the hybridity confirmation phenotypically. Now the hybridity confirmation is being done both by phenotypic as well as genotypic. In spite, there may be some errors in phenotypic confirmation. But genotypic confirmation, the chance for errors is very less. And genotypic confirmation is also very much required when the variability between the parents is very narrow. So if the, the height is same, if the grain type is same, if the plant type is same, and if the duration is same, then phenotypic confirmation of the hybridity is very difficult. Then genotypic confirmation is one um, advantageous uh, process wherein we can confirm the hybrid and only the true hybrids can be advanced. If we are not advancing the true hybrids, then we are wasting several resources. So to advance the true hybrids, we are going for the genotypic confirmation also along with the traditional phenotypic confirmation. Then the other modification that we have done is the F2 that we have going 4000 plants, instead of planting them in 20 into 15 centimeter spacing, we are planting them at 5 into 5 centimeter spacing, facing for field rapid generation advancement. What happens when we plant um, them very closely? So you are sitting very apart, so you are all very comfortable. So if I pack this room with 2000 people, um, then it will be very tightly packed, very uncomfortable. So when the plant is very uncomfortable, it comes to flowering early. So how early? One month early, 30 days, 15 to 15 days to 30 days based upon the genotype. genotype. So um, 15 to 30 days we can advance the flowering. What is the use of advancing? I need only one panicle. I need only few seeds. I don't need thousands of seed, I don't need tons of seed. So I need one panicle, few seeds, almost 10 to 20 seeds are enough for me. So that is why I am going for close spacing and remove the tillers. All the tillers, side tillers I will remove. I will retain the mother tiller only. only. So when I have planted at 5 into 5 centimeters spacing, retain the mother tiller only. I get the panicle, mother panicle almost 15 to 30 days early and immediately I will take it and put it in the field nursery. So I, again I don't go for regular planting at 20 to 15 centimeter. The spacing, I am not making any selection in F2. The 
uh, from 4,000 plants, I will get 4,000 panicles. So all those 4,000 panicles, if some plants have died, so I have assumed that there is a 10% um, mortality. So if there is 10% mortality due to various factors, then I am getting 3,600 panicles. All the 3,600 panicles, I will put it on a raised bed. So I will raise the bed and put the panicle tail to tail. I will show you how it is planted, planted in a field nursery. nursery. So the area is very much reduced. Again, because I have planted and the entire panicle I have planted on a raised bed in a tail to tail fashion. So that is why the area is very much reduced. So we can see here the area is 10 square meters. Earlier the area is 120 square meters, F2. F2 it is 120 square meters, there it is only 10 square meters. So in F3 it is 150 square meters. Here you can see the area is only 126 square meters. It is so 500 panicles can be accommodated in 17.5 square meters area. area. Then F4, similarly I have done, F5 I have done similarly, F6 I have done similarly. So it, it, assuming 10% mortality, here I am getting 2624 single panicles. Panicles are saying 2624 stabilized progenies for selection. The variability to make a selection. I have the scope for selection between 2624 individuals. Whereas earlier here I have the scope to select only between six progenies. Progenies. Here I have the scope to select between 2600 stabilized progenies which are going to breed true for the characters for which I am going to select. So that is the advantage. I have retained greater variability here in lesser area area and um, uh, I have advanced the breeding program. So 15 days, 15 days, 15 days I have went on advancing. I have planted even from F3 to F6, I have planted the panicle entire thing in a on, on a raised bed. So I have not um, sown the seeds. I have planted the entire panicle. So when the entire panicle is planted on a raised bed, all the seeds in the panicle will germinate. They will compete with each other, each other, and again early flowering will be there. And so because of that early flowering, the cycle gets reduced, the cycle time gets reduced. Reduced, so uh, this, uh, in this fashion, the cycle time when it is reduced, we can reduce it from six seasons or six years, years to three years or four years. Four years then coming to F6, F6, now here comes the problem. So 2600 progenies I have to raise. So earlier I do not require much area, but now I require much area. So here we go for single row evaluation along with the checks for yield and quality. So I have told you the different stakeholders. So I will based upon my product profile meeting to the requirements of all the stakeholders and the market, market I will select only those lines which meet the requirement and reject all those, all the others. Others here, and then the only those things I will advance to PYT. So here we are now still planning to eliminate the OYT. One in the trial also we are planning to eliminate to hasten up the process of product development. So PYT, AYT, two years station data, they will generate directly go to the MIT one and two in the uh, PYT and AYT itself, we go for agronomic testing. Now what we are doing is when the variety is there, when it is going for mini kit testing, we are going for agronomic, te agronomic testing. So because the number of lines we have reduced considerably, so we want to go for agronomic testing for spacing, fertilizer and planting, planting and method suitability, and then in MLT, 
the uh, miller acceptability and the consumer acceptability the dust testing and dna testing testing and be ready with all the information patient well before we go for the mini kits so when we go to the farmers we must be able to tell that this is the variety this is your problem um this is the problem with your variety current variety and this variety uh, having consumer acceptance miller acceptance and um, uh, the, this much of fertilizer this much of spacing is in which you are adopting adopting is going to suit your requirement so the farmer gets convinced so the conduct of mini kits also becomes easy easy otherwise now the varieties we are developing the dad centers or the extension centers the department of agriculture they are finding it very difficult to give it to the farmer because the moment they give the seed to the farmer the farmer is asking will the miller take uh, will it have a, a, a marketability and uh, what will be the price in the market so this is, these are the questions that the department of agriculture um, or the extension staff are facing when giving mini kits so if when the entire data is available the extension staff can conduct good mini kits in large areas areas satisfy the farmers farmers and even before release at least we can have the variety occupying in a large area so that the release becomes very easy so that was the case which happened with uh, a very recent variety which was released by acharya ng ranga agriculture university developed from maruteri itself in 2022 it was released in the state variety release committee and in, in kharif season is an swarna is the predominant variety cultivated in more than 3 lakh hectares almost 4 lakh hectares in the state of andhra pradesh at least so 15.52 lakh hectares kharif paddy is grown out of which 3 to 4 lakh hectares swarna is the predominant variety the major disadvantage with swarna of 135 to 140 days duration aeration is it larges when it larges completely under high fertilization the farmer has to incur almost 5000 to 6000 rupees additional cost for mechanical harvesting because the combine harvesters cannot harvest a large crop or if they are to harvest a large crop then they will take more time the charge has to be paid on hourly basis as so the cost escalation is there almost 5000 to 6000 rupees per acre the farmer has to pay extra um, for a large crop so the, the farmers wanted a non lodging variety similar to swarna almost 135 to 140 days duration in um, duration medium slender grain type um, and grain type and tolerant to of bph blast and blb so we could not come up with a variety tolerant to from um, uh, blb lb but we could we were able to give a swarna variety similar and it has got dirty gloom dirty gloom is preferred in the godavari region because in case of floods and whenever there is lodging the grain discoloration will be lesser and the market price will be more for a dirty gloom variety rather than a straw gloom variety so uh, we came up with mtu 1318 released as mtu rice 1318 which we could not give in the duration of 150 uh, 135 to 140 days it is of 150 days duration but completely non lodging so it has withstood even the recent cyclone michan cyclone also earlier cyclones 2020 there was a cyclone 2021 there was a cyclone 2022 and 23 also continuously we faced cyclones all these cyclones by the time it came as mini kit it has withstood the cyclones and now by the time it has released it is occupied 5 lakh acres and competing with mtu swarna for the first position with respect to kharif varieties um, varieties so uh, if your product um, if you are uh, if you are identifying that product 
if your product profile is true to the market demands or the demands of the stakeholders then your variety is going to be successful so i have given an example of mpu rice 1318 which was true to the demands of the market or the stakeholders and that is why it is successful we have released several other varieties mpu rice 1232 mpu rice mcm rice 103 several other varieties we have released but they could not reach up to the mark because they are the the product profile the target is limited uh, limited that is why they could not um, uh, so we need to market them we need to take up extensive uh, efforts to popularize them but a variety which is uh, meeting the requirements of the stakeholders will click like wildfire so it will spread like wildfire without any efforts so that is why we need to start with a good market research demand driven breeding program hasten up our breeding program um, to give the product with before the demand changes or the demand shifts okay so uh, i was talking all the time about the speed breeding and in the f2 it is called field so um, uh, all the state agriculture universities have resource crunch resource constraint we always work in a environment of resource crunch so we do not have crores of rupees to spend we do not have modern facilities so whenever we say modernization we think of high tech gadgets high tech uh, labs high tech equipments so now we are looking at a, a field oriented low resource resource uh, center modernization uh, scheme a scheme so it does not require any high tech lab or high tech equipment a equipment is simple modification which is going to hasten up your breeding program that is in, instead of planting at a, a, a regular spacing of 20 into 15 cm go for a 5 into 5 cm spacing a close spacing hasten to um, uh, hasten up the flowering and advance your breeding program this is this is the, therefore termed as field rapid generation advancement whereas rapid generation advancement will require a glass house with all the uh, wherein you can control the light you can control the temperature you can control the humidity free to hasten up the flowering so we do not require all this we use nature nature or our agronomic practices to hasten up the flowering and the maturity process as a cf then field nursery for f2 we are using field rga rga that is uh, planting at 5 into 5 cm for f3 to f6 generation we are using the um, field nursery nursery see here i was telling on a raised bed on a raised bed this is the raised bed they have um, uh, prepared and on that they are planting the entire panicle entire panicle is being planted so uh, this is uh, ppt is available in this laptop whoever wants you can share otherwise i will share you my mobile number whoever wants can just put a request to my whatsapp i will share my ppt with you any any other information or any other doubts that you have also you can discuss with me at me any time not only when i am at trichy any time you can discuss so here in the f3 to f6 we are using the field nursery method because the entire plant panicle is planted and then are sown on the raised bed the all the seeds in the panicle will be competing and that is why we will get an um, early flowering so earlier we used to plant at 20 all the seeds in a close 1 into 1 uh, square meter box or an area in the in the puddled field and then plant them individually at 20 into 15 cm spacing so the area required was about 1 acre but here it is only 0.25 acres so we are speaking about f3 to f6 generations together together here the population size will be more so uh, that is about all about speed breeding so in speed breeding we have 
phase end of the product cycle reduced the product cycle period from 6 years or 6 seasons to 4 seasons or 3 seasons reasons so now the another important component of modernization is smart breeding breeding after speed breeding it is smart breeding so all the breeders even the students to record the plant height what we do go to the field take a field notebook and then and somebody will take a scale l and then tell the plant height right and then record it in the field notebook manually now you can use your this field notebook on um, the field app is a um, the f- i mean which can be loaded into your mobile once it is loaded into your mobile so you just um uh, scan the qr code so every entry will have a qr code so here you can see earlier we used to have labels of the labels written in the what is the entry name so now we have a qr coded label so you scan you in the qr code with your mobile immediately it will go to the particular entry in the field app so immediately you can write um the if it is plant height select that um the trait and then um enter the data and the f- for that so to hasten up the process of data recording and to reduce the drudgery and to reduce the error error and to um uh, store the data for longer period without any any loss uh, this smart breeding approach would be useful then even in the post harvest also after harvest what do we do with thresh it and then weigh it manually but now um, uh, as soon as you weigh it immediately that weighment data will be captured captured and will be entered in the uh, fino app um, the fino app so that it is accurate without any error so there may be error while writing there may be error while telling there may be error while recording all such errors can be minimized and the field notebook if it is soiled if it is lost then your data is lost but you will be handling your mobile with care and caution so um, it will be there and it can be stored digitally only without any loss for several period so the cost of qr code printer and software is not in lakhs not in crores it is only in thousands 20000 rupees the cost of qr code labels it is only 600 rupees per roll of 1000 labels well affordable by all institutes everybody cost of plastic bag so earlier we used to have the bamboo pegs even every several people are still using the things but the bamboo pegs every season two seasons or three seasons you have to replace if they are broken then the labor will face problem problem it gets um, uh, it will damage their legs um, or even while removing also from the if uh, they are facing problems so this plastic pegs we can avoid all such pro- problems and increase the um, the duration also the number of seasons for which the plastic peg uh, life span is more much more compared to the uh, bamboo peg so with this i will conclude modernize you need to modernize to increase your efficiency save time money and resources and that is why all our breeding programs need to be modernized thank you one and all if you have any questions i will answer your queries or doubts or questions sir jai prakash sir sir <laughs> we are telling you will allow one of the primary tests and then remove all the side tests so in that case again the spacing will become more no no i am plotting at 5 into 5 cm spacing earlier no. now in the traditional method we will plant at 20 into 15 cm spacing mm-hmm. or 15 into 15 cm the spacing itself is reduced that is why the area is reduced And the bankers are the seeding or keeping the bankers assets on the raised bed. Raised bed, and they will not now uh, we will maintain the distance between plant to plant. No, distance. no distance between plant to plant is required. Then there the progeny will also differ. No? 
Each panicle is different. Each panicle is different. Each, the seed in each panicle is also different. So the, our assumption is 4,000 plants in F2, 4,000 panicles. All the 4,000 panicles so, are. Whether when you are placing the panicle, hmm. we allow you the we allow spacing between the panicles. Panicles is 10 centimeter space. 10 centimeter space. Just like the, what we do for nucleus impression. Yes. Again, you will go for transplanting of the cell. No. No. No transplanting. F3 to F6. Then yeah. 5 by 5 will not be there. It is getting closer. This is, this is F3 to F6. See, they're, they're, it is on a raised bed. Yeah. Raised bed, they are planting the panicles. 10 centimeters spacing. So, uh, can I, I don't think I can increase the size, no? It is not possible to increase the size. Yeah. So, the uh, panicles they are planting on a raised bed. The spacing between the panicles. See, these panicles, each panicle is 10 centimeters. So, actually here, so uh, this, uh, this panicle and this panicle will be placed in tail to tail fashion. So, tail to tail, so the two tails will converge. So, the length of the nursery, no, length of the row? No, no, the uh, entire row. Entire row will be 10 meters. Okay. Bed, bed, bed will be 10 meters. So, so and the width is, width is half meter. Half so meter. How, how many panicles will be placed? No, 10 meters, we can get 500 panicles. Almost 500 panicles. Within the panicle, say for example, some 20 plants, 26 will get germinate and you will allow acidities to grow, isn't it, sir? So, I will take only one panicle from each panicle that I have planted. Yeah. One panicle, you plant it and you allow the entire seeds to germinate and make the seedlings. Make seedlings, but I will take only one panicle. Again, I one plant. One panicle. One, so, panicle, yeah. one panicle, I have placed it on the raised bed, I have got 50 seeds germinated, 50 plants have come, only 20 panicles I have got, but I will take only one panicle. One panicle. And the entire 50 will allow it to flower, isn't it sir? No, remove one panicle, whichever early panicle I have got, from the 20 panicles that I have got, whichever is early, I will take it and patam. My job is over. So in F6 itself, you are going for upgrade of derivation? No, not in F6. After the station trials. So that actually is our proposal. But if it is not needed, no. No, no, sir. Actually, this is our proposal, which we have not yet accepted. Accepted. This has to be incorporated in our technical program. But this speed breeding program of F2 and F3 to F6 has been accepted and now we are adopting it. So this modification of the trialing system is still under discussion. This is the proposed one. So now we have OYT. So we conducted our development and our experience. So Adjusting the amount of the data or air length, we can go for the screens. In a net house, uh, glass house, glass house. That, that is that is 25 crores. I am uh, uh, not dealing with photosensitive lines. So because a photosensitivity is an undesirable trait as far as we are concerned. So it may be desirable in some specific areas, but we want photo insensitivity, photo thermo insensitivity. So my in my product profiles, that is also one important trait, photo and thermo insensitivity. Sir, actually, I want to know from you, sir. Huh? Actually, you have touched upon the genetic gains hmm. that is uh, observed or of time or translated your product when we attempt varietal into varietal cross. How do you compare this genetic gain or the rate of genetic gain or the success of uh, the genetic gain 
when you compare the variety in the variety versus select into select, you were mentioning based on the breeding values, you need to select the breeders. Yes, for that. Let me throw some light on this. Yeah, the right now I do not have the breeders formula. Um, uh, if, if the breeders formula, uh, you have um, uh, the denominator. So you, if, when you reduce the denom, when you increase the denominator, what happens? If you increase the denominator, um, uh, suppose 100 by 2 is 50, 100 by 4 is 25. Increase the denominator, reduce the time. So um, the gain, the gain. In, in the reverse, reverse is in the decrease the denominator, the gain. I will give the details. I will share. Actually, I have not brought it. So unless I put it there. Uh, no, no, actually, I wanted to write it. I am not touching. See, variety into variety, I will tell it in a very practical term. Yes. So, the variety I have crossed, I take now. Uh, for example, my objective is to get a high yielding variety. So, uh, now I have given MTU Rice 1318. It gives almost 10% yield advantage over Swarna. Mm -hmm. Right? So, I have given a non lodging variety. Yes. So, now um, uh, the, um, they are asking. For a high yielding variety over MTU 1318. So now if I if I make a cross with MTU 1318, 18, which has got a yield potential of six tons per hectare, hectare, and a and a cross with some other variety, some other variety which is having let us say which is in mini kits, which is in mini kits. Let us say BPT 2846 is in mini kits. So, the mini kit and a variety program, I have made a cross. So, um, the yield potential of uh, the variety in the mini kits is, this is 6 tons per hectare, this is 6.5 tons per hectare. hectare. So, but if you take a line which is in your station trials, what will be the yield potential of it? Much superior to your existing mini kit variety, released variety, and already you are existing jobs. So you make in those crosses, crosses which are having that yield potential with the desirable traits of MTU rice thirteen eighteen, you will come up with the desired product more quickly. If you make these crosses, you need to be fortunate enough or lucky enough to get the desired product. But here you need you are uh, dependent on luck or fortune is re reduced. This is target driven breeding program, whereas this is luck or fortune oriented breeding program. Sir, how do you feel? Yeah. How do you feel about the narrowing or the generic or the genetic base in these processes? Um, narrowing of the genetic, of the genetic uh, see uh, that is why I always used to tell to my students. The number of crosses is still more. Yes, fifty crosses. How come the narrow? Fifty crosses. No, when the parents are related, it becomes narrow. It it becomes narrow. I always used to tell my breeder, my students also, never target your variety to become a mega variety. Wrong objective. Um, you must target your variety for specific location. In several forums I have been asked, can you give a variety which is uh, very good across locations? Across, I say no. Uh, you tell me the location, you tell me the location specific constraints, uh, we will tell the variety. So uh, when you go to a doctor, he will get the information and prescribe the medicine suitable for you. So, a location specific no variety, uh, yeah, no, no common medicine, no common mantra or no common formula. So, we have to go for location specific varieties. When there are location specific varieties, varieties there will be diversity. When the diversity is maintained, everybody will be happy. Even the insects will be happy, when the insects should be happy, the diseases should be happy, we should be happy. If we, we alone want to be happy, then we it is a wrong objective. We have to, one day we will have to weep. Yes. So we have to manage. 
we our objective should be to manage not to control so if we are trying to control it is a wrong objective if we are trying to manage trying to survive it is a right object sir and one of the question ega means ega prati so the light over modernization of the planet and uh, of course uh, from the zone of our experience and presentation we understood that we have uh, really uh, modernized with respect to evolution part but when it comes to the evaluation part is the most uh, time consuming period for a variety to be released in the uh, normal variety list uh, procedures and all. How challenging it is to convince the policy makers and bureaucrats to uh, change this mode of uh, variety listing because uh, we have been hearing that this has to be reduced, reduced because too much of time in testing for the uh, evaluation for this so now this is now if we start if we start our presentation with the target market driven breeding program program and if we can define the market and the period of the demand that it is going to exist so the demands will keep on changing so if we have a very good idea of the market the demand and its dynamics it won't be difficult to convince convince our policy makers if we do not have any uh, grip on the on the dynamics of the demand and the market then we will not be able to convince our policy makers so the mark the policy makers will always look at the are we meeting the demand or are we not meeting the demand we are investing crores of rupees in research what is the um, uh, solution that we are giving or what is the problem that we have addressed how effective are we address in addressing the problem ground level problem so that is what the policy makers will look at so uh, if you can give that statistics so if you are doing it in a target driven mode naturally we will be able to convince so uh, why we are not able to convince not only you we also because we are not studying the market and the market dynamics so breeders are working separately economists are working separately extension workers are working separately pathologists are working separately entomologists are working there is no integration of the disciplines the particularly the economics statistics and the um, uh, extension they are totally um, excluded from the research program so they have to give this feedback they have to give the breeder alone cannot do all these things so it should be an integration so where are the extension people coming in presently only for the product testing so but they have to give the product profile what is required by the farmer what is required by the stakeholders that product profile is not the job of the breeder it, it is the job of the extension economics the market dynamics the economist should tell um, uh, then the statistician should tell the extent of the problem the, so all of them together should devise the breeding strategy and come up with a product so um, unless and un, until all of us come together we are not going to be successful so uh, together we can do anything individually it is difficult anything else Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, can I ask a question? Yes. Yes, sir. It was an excellent and eye-opening presentation, sir. Sir, uh, can you put some light on the late segment? Like uh, as you say, discussed the Swarna segment. So, what will be the scope, future scope, because of the decrease in water uh, uh, availability and all? So, what do you think about the late segment? Scope for the late segment in the near future? 